So I just wanted to add my thanks to Cynthia. Um, you know, we've been working increasingly to engage uh, patients as full partners and stakeholders in all of our studies, design uh, and execution, because you know nobody wants to build a product that the end user cannot use and is not useful. So we will uh, continue to work uh, diligently to engage patients as much as possible uh, from the onset. Uh, and thank you, Cynthia, so much for those inspiring words. Um, I have about five minutes uh, to talk about the organization and governance of this. Let me see if I can work the, which one works? Ah, okay, so this was not a good time to make a slide with animations, but that's what I've done. Um, so this is just, you know, how do we do a public-private partnership, right? So some people in the room know how to share, understand how that works. Some people in the room understand how AMPs work. So I wanna give you an overview and you can think of it as a four ends of a, of a square, right? So at the bottom, you have the hard chair steering committee. Many people know this, uh, which is mostly site PIs, NHL BI members, and it's an open meeting for people to attend. And with this meeting, we will be launching the AMP Heart Failure Steering Committee, which will have members, uh, our industry partners who are going to, uh, who, are, who are funding the program and to giving it scientific direction, as well as FDA, NHLBI, and FNIH members. Um, Heart Chair Steering Committee uh, is sort of funded through NHLBI, so that oversight is pretty straightforward. Um, the oversight for AMP Heart Failure Steering Committee is uh, with the AMP Executive Committee, which has uh, sort of senior industry executives, directors of various NIH institutes, FDA and NIH, FNIH. Uh, and so, so this happens about four times a year. And every AMP that's launched, the institutes involved in that, in this case, NHLBI, Dr. Gibbons will then serve on the executive committee. This is how we complete the circle, right? So um, the steering committees at the bottom will be responsible for the work of and output from various core lab, working groups, committees, et cetera. So those two are truly steering functions uh, of a lot of work that people are going to be doing. And uh, the way we do this, so this is, you know, as Courtney showed in her slide, if, if the slides were working for you, then uh, this is a 10th amp. So we have some sense of how to do joint leadership with industry, academia, NIH, and FDA. Uh, and the really the way to do it really is through shared scientific visioning and managing funding complementary separately, uh, but making sure that we are engaging and make and funding complementary programs. And really, all the data that comes out of it is available to everybody in one place for early access and for everybody's different needs from that data. Right? People want to publish people want to use it in the drug development pathway, we can all get something out of it and it does not need to be siloed for, for a few years before it comes out. So that's really the goal to accelerate partnership. Um, so this slide then is the, essentially the same, but now we are sort of double clicking on the steering committee to so the bottom two things. So on the left, you have the AMP Heart Failure Steering Committee, which will probably meet once a month. Sometimes it's twice a month. And that's all the uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, tech companies, nonprofits, as well as NIH and FNIH that sit on that committee. And this is really their funding stream. And so this is what the steering committee will meet and decide what additional things to fund. Now, of course, we have a research plan that uh, guides us in that direction. And so we think we may need to fund additional sites. We may need to fund additional cores. We may need to fund additional phenotyping. All of that decision is made by the steering committee. On the right side, of course, is the heart share steering committee. You have all the existing clinical sites, uh, co-chairs, as well as the DTC and NHLBI leadership that sort of manages that part of it. And, here also there is additional funding through ancillary studies, right? So we man manage the funding separately, but then we hope that we have a shared vision and are aligning and not double funding something or not missing an important piece. So we, this, this requires fairly constant communication between everybody who's working on this. And that sort of is what's depicted in this slide where you can see there are people who are overlapping both committees. And most of these people don't really have a direct vote, right? So there's the heart share co-chairs, which is Javed and, and Swati, uh, NHLBI members, FNIH members, and, the, and uh, folks from Data Translation Center who overlap both committees. So that's more work for them, 
but it's really a way to make sure that we are aligned uh, and, and sort of, you know, not wasting any time doing things that we don't need to do and, and, and align in our purpose. All data, of course, goes to the biodata catalyst, as uh, Vandana had said earlier. Um, and this is also where a, a bunch of working groups, um, uh, you know, sort of report up to. So as, as most of you know, there's working groups for deep phenotyping, data portal, publication, uh, extant data sets and images, as well as skills training, but there can be others. And so one of the things we're thinking about is a, is a working group that deals, that has patients uh, as an as advisory board that can review and give us feedback. And these are all thoughts. So for all people in this room, you have an opportunity to think about what else we can do together and see if that's possible within the purview of either one of the steering committees and, and uh, take some leadership on that. That's absolutely encouraged and, and why we are here. So I think, we'll wait. We are not moving. Ah. Um, so I wanted to also put a timeline together uh, because we've all been talking about time and how time passes. Um, we have been working to co-design the research strategy uh, for the last at least a couple of years. I think it's three to four years to be honest, but my slide didn't go all the way that way. Um, we are here where the star is and we are solidly into steady execution. Uh, and our hope is at the end of this, we will get to precision therapies for HFF, right? Uh, but we also hope to train new investigators, and we also hope to make data accessible to everybody before the end of the program. So these are all our, our core goals. And how we do this, how did we do the first thing? We got input from, you saw all the pictures on that slide that Dr. Goff showed, uh, 47 different individuals contributed voluntarily their time to put together the research strategy. That's our guiding document. Uh, this had to be reviewed and approved at multiple levels. Now is with the launch of the private uh, funding arm, we can add additional clinical sites, additional core labs uh, through FNIH and NHLBI ancillary studies. Uh, we will continue to support all the working groups, cores, and committees, and all of this will be managed by the two steering committee. I hope you're starting to get a picture of how this is going to work. And our ultimate goal, because we cannot leave that out, uh, is to see if we can use our learnings to qualify biomarkers with the FDA biomarker qualification program. This is something we already do at FNIH across different programs and have some expertise doing, and to eventually get to some kind of a precision framework to get to new therapies. So this is sort of all of our, our goals. Here are some links for you. Um, we did an announcement for this partnership this morning. You can go to the FNIH website. Uh, Ryan has posted all of this on amphf.org. And so you can definitely get it there. Um, the NIH uh, office, the director, NIH uh, website has a page on all the AMPs and a page on uh, and, a, and an overarching page. So you can go to that link as well, learn some more. Um, as Sanjeev said, the heart share study uh, website is, so you can go to either one, it will take you to the same place. Um, and uh, yes, the paper did come out today and the links there as well. So either through the slides or on the, um, on the website, you should be able to easily access the links and find the rest of us if you cannot and we'll, we'll find a way to get to you. Um, if you have time, uh, you know, if, we are, if you have technical difficulties and other things, if you have time in between, feel free to uh, boost the message on social media. Uh, we'd appreciate that.